For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to another PB Tech newscast. Coming up, SunTech cuts solar cell capacity to boost utilization rates. LDK Solar makes further drastic revisions to full year guidance. And KPMG says India will reach market potential of 12.5 gigawatt. SunTech is back in the news this week after the company announced it would temporarily cut its solar cell capacity to 1.8 gigawatt, down from 2.4 gigawatts due to industry overcapacity and the need to reduce production costs by improving utilization rates. The move will impact approximately 1,500 workers in Wuxi, China, though many positions will be relocated, according to the company. David King, SunTech's newly appointed CEO, said that initiatives are being targeted to create a sustainable business model and return the business to positive operating cash flow next year. Only last week we reported King was restructuring senior management positions with the exit of Andrew Beebe, Suntech's former chief commercial officer. This week, Jerry Stokes, president of Suntech Europe, has agreed a settlement with the company and will leave shortly. As a consequence, he's resigned his position as vice president of the European Photovoltaic Industry Association's eight-member board of directors, which he was only appointed to back in April this year. Suntech has confirmed that Vidat Gugli, current Vice President of Sales and Marketing, has also been officially announced as Managing Director Suntech in Europe, reporting to David King. Losses continue to mount at LDK Solar as it reported a net loss for the second quarter of 2012 higher than its revenue levels. Net sales were 235.4 million US dollars. Full year guidance was again revised downwards to between 1.1 and 1.5 billion US, down drastically from last quarter's revised guidance of between 1.5 and 2 billion. LDK Solar started the year with revenue guidance of up to 2.7 billion US dollars. The company shipped 316.7 megawatts of wafers, 135.6 megawatts of cells and modules in the second quarter, and produced a total of approximately 538 metric tons of polysilicon. A total of approximately 90.8 megawatts of cells was also produced during the second quarter. However, the net loss for the second quarter was 254.3 million US, up from 185.2 in the first quarter. Management said that it expected revenue in the third quarter of this year to be in the range of 220 million to 260 million US dollars. Wafer shipments between 190 megawatts and 240 megawatts, cells and module shipments between 140 and 180 megawatts. For the third quarter of fiscal 2012, LDK Solar estimates its revenue to be in the range of 220 to 260 million, flat with or even down on the second quarter. The company continues to struggle with massive debts at overcapacity and is seeking further financial support. With solar PV capacity rising from under 20 megawatts to more than 1 gigawatt in two years, all eyes have turned to India. The latest energy report from KPMG, The Rising Sun, predicts that India has a solar market potential of 12.5 gigawatts calculated to be reached by 2017. KPMG state that the captive and REC market has the potential of reaching 2,500 megawatts by 2016 to 2017. Additionally, KPMG recommends the Indian government should provide infrastructural support, appropriate regulations such as banking facility or net metering to allow access to rooftop and small-scale solar power projects, which is expected to reach parity before grid-level consumers. Furthermore, KPMG's report helps to instill a little faith in the Indian government because it has proposed the creation of a number of national manufacturing and investment zones to boost growth of the manufacturing industry in the country. However, in related news, Indian solar manufacturers are reported to be pressuring the government to take anti-dumping action against Chinese companies. Rumours abound in the Chinese media that Indian solar manufacturers are following in the footsteps of Solar World and pressuring the government there to take anti-dumping action against those Chinese companies. 
Just a few weeks ago, we highlighted that a non-government organization, the Center for Science and Environment, accused U.S. thin film manufacturers of using a loophole in the Indian government's renewable energy scheme to ruin the Indian domestic PV industry. No formal response to any possible investigation has been made. China is expected to invest around 39.5 billion US dollars in domestic solar power generation over a five-year period, according to a development plan released by the National Energy Administration, cited by the China Daily. As part of China's recently revised 12th five-year plan, which runs between last year and 2015, China is expected to install 10 gigawatt of large-scale PV capacity. It will also add 10 gigawatt of distributed PV power generation, as well as 1 gigawatt of solar light and heat power generation systems, helping to create up to 500,000 jobs in the industry. News of this comes amid ongoing trade disputes between China and the EU, as well as the US and potentially now India. However, with a strong focus now on the domestic PV market, hostility against China may weaken as overseas solar companies may start to focus on entering the Chinese market. China is a major producer of PV products, but the majority of those products are for export. In 2010, China accounted for almost 63%, the equivalent of 10 gigawatts of total global solar cells production, which reached 16 gigawatts, according to reports. In related news, it would appear that PV projects on agricultural land are playing a key role in China's rapidly growing distributed PV power generation segment, as identified by NPD SolarBuzz. Apparently, the market research firm is tracking more than 300 megawatts of agricultural PV projects in the country in its China Deal Tracker report. The China Energy Conservation and Environmental Protection Group have set a target to develop more than 100 megawatts of PV projects within China's agricultural sector. As a result, the market research company highlights that an increasing number of PV project developers are now eyeing up these new opportunities. Greenhouses have become a popular choice for agricultural PV installations because they offer benefits in addition to a supply of electricity, as a short supply of farmland to central and eastern China has created some difficulties for project developers installing ground-mounted PV systems. Consequently, many companies have turned to rooftop PV installations, whilst the more attractive developments combine rooftop PV systems with agricultural applications. NPD SolarBuzz noted that commercial agricultural PV projects are favoured by the top PV developers in China, and that this segment is estimated to grow quickly in the coming years. Well, that's it for another week. Lots to digest in what has been a busy few days. Take your time, check out pvtech.org for more information, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.